Hi, now that we are familiar with methods, let's move on to constructors. Now constructors, as I've mentioned earlier, are very special methods. Okay, they are methods nonetheless, Okay, but they are special. Here's a quick review. Why are they special? Number one, constructors have the same name as the class, okay, including a capitalization. A constructor has no return type. You can't put a void there. All right. Uh, this was not mentioned. Now, one of them, if you have more than one constructor, right? One of them is called during instantiation. Okay, and a constructor is a good place and a common place to to put statements which initialize the instant variables to certain default values. So let's take a look back to our player class. Now these are instance variables. Now I've written three constructors. Constructor 1, constructor 2, constructor 3. How do I know they're constructors? Number 1, the name of the method is the same as the name of the class. Okay, In this case, player. Number 2, there's no return type, not even void. Just based on this, it is obvious that these three are actually constructors. Now I mentioned that um, one of them is called during instantiation. Now in this case, I'm dealing with overloaded constructors. Recall, what is a method overloading? Overloaded methods are basically methods of the same name, but with different input parameters. Now constructors, even though they are special methods, are still methods and constructors can be overloaded as well. So in this example here, I have three constructors in the same class and they are overloaded. Same name, same name, same name. This part is different. The first constructor takes in nothing. The second constructor takes in a string. A third constructor takes in a string followed by an integer. So this is the legal overloading. All right. Now, constructors are special because one of them, okay, if there are many, as in this case, will be called during instantiation. So when a new player instance is created from the player class, one of these three constructors will be called. Only one, okay, is, is automatically called. Right, that's why these these methods are what we call constructors. They are they are they are useful in the construction of an object. They are useful in the construction or the instantiation of the object. So how do we determine which of the three methods or which of the three con constructors is being called? This is the key. It depends on how you knew the player object. So in this case, when I create a new player object using a new keyword new player bracket bracket the constructor which should be called during the instantiation process is the one which takes in nothing this one okay and what happens when this constructor is being called okay it sets the instance variable id to no name it sets the um, instance variable endurance to 100 okay and uh, I'm going to uncomment this line. It will print running first constructor. Let me uncomment this line. Um, just for testing purposes, we usually do not have print line statements in constructors. Okay, it's for tracing purposes only. So let me try and run a player test. Okay, let me save it. Just to show you that line number four will cause the first constructor to be invoked. Okay, you see. When I reach line number four of player test, okay, I actually jump to line nine of player sets the ID 
okay, of that particular player object to no name, sets the endurance of that particular player object to 100, and on line 12, it prints out running first constructor, and that's what you're seeing, running first constructor. Okay, and then I, I set the ID to uh, Peter, oh, okay, this is messing up my... Uh, my example is going to this this statement p two dot get id is going to return peter instead of no name. Okay, that's why it's printing peter here. Okay, it's messing up my example. Let me let me delete this. Okay, let me save it and run it again. Compile it again and run it. Okay, it's going to show no name in this case because um, in the first constructor <coughs> id is set to the string no name. Okay, so I've proven that only the first constructor has executed. Right, what if I pass in a string in a new statement? Pass in uh, Mary, for example. Save it. Let me compile player test. Okay. Wow, it's taking real long. <coughs> Let me break it, control C, and compile it again. Oh, this is this is rare. Okay, did I save all this? Yep, all saved. Uh, let me try again. Player test.java. Okay. Okay, let me open a new DOS window. TMP player test.java. Okay, no, that's that. That's done. Let me run it. And this time, what gets printed out? Running second constructor. All right. What is happening? Now, when I reach statement four of player test, when I create a new instance of player and pass over a string, this constructor does not get called. This is the one which gets called, the second constructor. Okay, the one which takes in a string. Remember, only one of the three constructors will be called. And which one will be called depends on how you knew the player. In this case, when I when I passed in a string into the into the statement, this is the constructor which will be called. It sets ID to Mary in this case. Okay, why it's been passed in, it sets endurance to 100 and prints out running second constructor. It's exactly is exactly what is expected, what we are seeing here, the output. Okay, the ID is Mary, endurance is 100. Now, what if I knew it by passing in a name, let's say Susan, followed by 50? Okay, compile. Something is wrong with laptop. Okay, it's still uh, running the old version. Let me compile again. Okay, done. Now, look at this. It's running the third constructor, and its ID is set to Susan, endurance is set to 50, and there's the code in the third constructor. Takes in Susan here, 50 here, it sets ID to Susan, it sets endurance to 50, and it prints out running third constructor. Okay, remember we should get rid of all these uh, print line statements. Okay, um, constructors, there's no good reason for a constructor to print out anything unless it's for debugging purposes. 
So what I've shown here is uh, <coughs> you no know, an example of uh, overloaded constructors, and uh, that only one of them be called during instantiation, depending on how you knew. Now, if you if you do that, okay, you get a compilation error. Let's take a look at a compilation error. Why? Because there's no constructor which takes in an int in in player. Yep, there's one which takes in nothing here. There's one which takes in a string followed by an int. Okay, there's no constructor which takes in an int. I expect a compilation error when I actually compile player tests. Okay. <coughs> I think something is running in the background. It's taking a long, long time. Come on, show me my compilation error. Yep, that's it. It says on line 4 of player test. What's that? Okay, this is a statement, line 4 of player test, no suitable constructor found for player which takes in an int. Alright, so the compilation error is actually quite comprehensive in this case. Um, you can view a constructor as a, as a way to construct an object. So if you have a class with 100 constructors, okay, when you create that object and instance of that class okay there's you can choose from this hundred ways one of them to run okay that's why I'm saying that it is um, common to initialize instant variables in a constructor it's a good place to do it um, although it is not wrong if you assign the, the default value of ID and endurance here okay using the assignment operator um, there's this term here, default. What is the default constructor? The default constructor is the one without any input parameters. It's just a term. So this is the default constructor. The one which takes in nothing. Okay, it's just a term. The other constructors are, some people use the term specific constructors. Or they're just constructors. So when people say default constructor, it refers to the parameterless constructor. Now the next question I have on my objective list here is what happens if you don't write a constructor at all? Now you have seen just now, I've deleted all my constructors and player.java can compile. So what happens if you don't write a constructor? Okay, the answer is Java will provide free of charge a default constructor which does nothing. All right. Uh, when I say it does nothing, is actually a not entirely accurate. Um, but that's that. The discussion of that is beyond the scope of this session. Okay. So if you do not write a constructor at all, Java will insert a default constructor. That means one which takes in nothing. Okay. On the other hand, if you write a single constructor, let me show an example here. Let's assume that. I write a constructor, only one, okay, which takes in a string followed by an integer. Now let me get rid of this, this print line statement. I save it. Now if I do this, Java will not provide any additional constructor for me. Now in this case, the player class has got only one constructor, no default constructor. And the only way you can create instance of player is to pass in a string followed by a number here. Now if you try something like this, save it. Okay. You get a compilation error. Okay, because there's no constructor which takes in nothing. Okay, on the other hand, if I don't have a constructor, delete, save. This works. Why? Reason? A default constructor is provided in player, free of charge, since I did not 
write any constructor in player. Okay, so um, this statement is true. Okay, now the last part here I'm going to talk about. Um, we mentioned this when we talked about methods. We can use that this dot instance variable name. We can use this in methods to refer to the instance variable if there's a naming conflict. That means there's a local variable which has the same name as an instance variable. This is this applies. Let me let me undo all my um, constructor deletion. Now this applies in constructors as well. So in this case, this, the constructor that uses a local variable called id. I can use this dot id to refer to the instance variable. I'm actually assigning the value passed into the constructor to the instance variable id. So. So nothing is new here. I'm just trying to show an example of uh, using a this keyword in a constructor, as in other methods. Okay, how to use a this keyword to to disambiguate. All right, if you have a naming conflict here. That's all I have for you for this chapter.